Hi, how you doing? We're going to watch a video today, uh, and this time it's a Hemon. So the video I've picked is called, one moment, Hema Grappling Front Throw, Wrestling Ring and Abrazzari. It's um, quite an old video, it's about six years old. It's had three, three and a half thousand views, and um, I thought it might be interesting. I often talk about skill levels in Hema, and I know that the guys in Poland, a lot of the Eastern European groups, are relatively solid and they, they tend to have good fundamental combat skills, so wrestling, grappling, hand-to-hand um, -hand stuff. We, we're going to do a video on that relatively soon and why that's important, but, but yeah, for now, let's put that aside and we'll, uh, we'll dive straight into the video. <laughs> okay, so we've got to throw you kind of, you've got past the side point. Um, one hand's coming through between the legs, taking hold of the leg. The other hand's kind of up on the neck, the throat. This, I, this picture, I don't think is quite the same thing. This, to me, appears to be. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it this different? Let's go back and look at this. But I'm. I, this is not right. Hang on. Let's just go back, and. Right. It's a solid throw, there's no denying that, but um, you've probably spotted this now and you're way ahead of me, but when he puts his hand through the legs, he's taking hold of the side of the pelvis and he's got his other hand up at the throat to lift and, and push, whereas this guy quite clearly is holding onto the wrist. Um, so that is different. This this reminds me of, um, of a Fiori dagger move, one of the later dagger plays. I'll see if I can dig out the, the, the picture and see, but where you, you kind of take the dagger off to the side and you can reach through and take the hand. I think, I have a feeling that Fury does it with an ankle pick rather than um, a push to the back of the, the neck. But I've definitely, I've definitely been shown that and I've definitely trained it and I'm pretty certain it's one of the last dagger plays in, in Fury. Um, but yeah, so what's this? It's a woodcut. It looks like early mid 16th century. I'll do some research on this, see if I can find this picture. But yeah, my guess is that it's Germanic Lichtenauer school, mid 16th century, looking at the art. But I guess we'll find out. Let's get back in the video. I've got traumatic osteoarthritis in my um, scaphoilunate joint. There's a reason I'm telling you this. Years ago, I think it might have been the second time Wade Chalice came over as part of the scientific wrestling camp and we were training for three days in Woking. And one of the throws, he does this little little hop, hop, pop, hip, pop to a slam with um, a little pull on the, on the hip to a back hook to a, a, a crooked head. It's a beautiful transition, but in fact, basically what it means is you're going to take all of them and you lift them and you slam them. And I was being slammed and I fully expected to go one way, this way, and <laughs> as they lifted me up, I started to brace this way and I got flipped and the guy... Reggie, it's you, if you're watching, um, slammed me the other way, I put a hand out, which was a rookie mistake, and I landed on an outstretched hand, um, in medical parlance we call it a foosh, fall on outstretched hand, uh, and one of the most common things you can get from that, as long as you're not a postmenopausal woman, and to the best of my knowledge, I'm not a postmenopausal woman, is a fractured scaphoid. It was fine, you know, I carried on going, Four, six weeks later, it was still sore over that little bit here. It's called your anatomical snuff box. You can just get in there. And, um, and it, was a, it was sore for ages. Eventually, it settled down. And then it started to get bad again. 
One of the issues with the sky... <laughs> this is definitely a tangent, I can only apologise. One of the big issues with the scaphoid is that the blood supply to the scaphoid bone only goes in one direction through it. So if you get a fracture through the waist of the scaphoid, the, the section that is furthest away from the blood supply loses its blood supply and weirdly in your scaphoid that's actually the proximal bit, the bit that's closest to you because the blood supply kind of goes up and back in. But what that means is that the bottom bit of your scaphoid that forms part of your wrist joint sits right down here at the base of your thumb, tends to die and you get a vascular necrosis, it changes the shape of the bone slightly and you end up with uh, osteoarthritis of that joint. I've got that! Um, and this was just a really, really long-winded way of saying when he's falling onto his hands like that, it makes me wince because that's a, a really common way to injure yourself. And weirdly, you can get anything from a scaphoid, a distal radial fracture, a, a, a mid-forearm fracture, uh, a radial head or supracondylar humeral fracture, humeral shaft, uh, neck of humerus through to um, clavicle, your collarbone, and or you can break any of that through putting your hand out to save yourself. So when I see somebody doing that, it, it makes me cringe a little bit. And obviously you've got no point, no, no point. You've got no choice in this circumstance because if you don't put your hands out to save yourself, you're gonna land on your face. So it's a great throw. Let's go back and watch it again. Um, well, let, I don't mean that. I mean, so let's, let's get on with the video and, and, and watch a bit more. an interesting one. That, that's definitely more that what they're doing, isn't it? Um, other than the fact that this is with daggers. That, does that look like Gladiatoria to you? It does to me. So that looks, looks a bit earlier, maybe late 15th century, and that's definitely a dagger play, but that's, that's very much the same move that they're doing. He's not got hold of the, the, the hand in that one. So yeah, that's definitely a more accurate throw. I've, I think I've figured out what it is that's making me a little bit uncomfortable with watching this throw, is that they, and this is a relatively common problem with HEMA, is because the, the techniques that we learned from HEMA are, are drawn from manuscripts and they're kind of, they're discrete, they're, they're self-contained, each technique is drawn and described individually, there's no context for it. So what he's doing is he's stood a metre or so behind his opponent, he's walking up, putting his hand on them, reaching through, taking their legs and slamming them face down on the floor, which to me looks a little bit like mugging someone. Um, so I'd quite like to see some context to this technique, I'd quite like to see how it's set up um, and how you get to that position where you're behind somebody to throw them without them simply just turning round a little bit. Let's keep watching. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see what they're doing. Yeah, I thought like that. Again, yep. They've got hold of the wrist though. So it's again that's a, that's the slightly different version, isn't it? I mean this this is a throw you do see this quite a lot. I'm sure I've seen it in um, von Asfold. I like the thing with the wall because it, you know you're not, you're not falling all that way. It takes away that idea that you're going to potentially hurt yourself landing badly. But again, this picture isn't quite what they're showing, is it? And again, there's no context. Um, is this Mayor? Paulus Hector Mayor? Looks that way. Stick something in the comments. I'm sure some of you guys know better than me, but that's that's what it looks like to me. It. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. That is the same picture we just saw, right? We're certainly being shown that one again. I think, I mean, clearly this is a relatively solid throw, but I think out of context, just presented as an isolated move, it's pretty pointless. I think if you're gonna go at the trouble of making videos like this, then you need to show us a little bit more about it. 
rather than just go, here's a thing from a book. I can say that if I look at the book. What I want is to understand how how you get to that position. Are there any nuances to do with it? And obviously, it, it's a what? Just over a minute video, so they're clearly not going to have any time to do that. But it'd be great if somebody was maybe putting some text on the screen, giving us some pointers, or at least giving us a little bit more information on the source material so we can go and check it out ourselves. A lot of people may watch this video and look at that and not recognise those images, or, or indeed know where they can find them. Um, so I'm going to make sure I've done that. I probably already have. So if I've been putting up images and text and things, letting you know where, where, where they're from, then... Um, then it means that I found them. If I haven't, it means that I haven't been able to find them either. So, hmm, let's finish the video and then we'll have a bit of a roundup, a bit of a catch up after we're done. It's training both sides, that's good. Oh, funny moments, always good. I guess it's always a risk when you're doing anything where you reach through somebody's legs and go pick them up. Um, you know, it's, if you do jiu-jitsu, you've probably tried to armbar someone and um, injured yourself in your gentleman's area. Um, I know <laughs> the other day, God, I can't remember who it was, somebody I was rolling with, and, and they're a lower grade than me, but they're really strong and significantly younger than me. But almost everyone at the club is significantly younger than me. So that doesn't really narrow it down. But I'd got to an armbar position and I want to put it on. And you know sometimes where you go to put on an armbar and you know that perhaps you've aligned things badly and if you crank that armbar enough to make them tap it's going to hurt you at least as much as it hurts them. Um, but I wasn't willing to let go and reset because I knew damn well that the second I loosened off then they'd be off like a shot. So I cranked it anyway. Yeah, had to set out a couple of rounds. So yeah, so this is an interesting throw. I like this throw. Um, it's a great one. You see it all over the place. Um, actually, come to think of it, bear with me one minute, don't go away, I'll be right back. Gonna need my glasses for this one. Uh, where are they? Here they are. Um, did you guess? It's Parkins. Let's have a little look. Um, towards the end, Parkins has only got uh, two or three pictures in it. Um, but one of them, I think, does indeed show a variation. Yeah, there you go. One of them does indeed show a variation on this. Let's see what Parkins has to say about it. Because it's always worth hearing what Parkins has to say. Where have we gone? Oh, here we go. A contentious man. If you have a companion that disturbs your mirth and would be rid of him, with your left hand, take hold of his collar behind. With your right, put between his legs as far as his codpiece and lift him up easily and thrust him out of the room, for he can never turn upon you. But if you lift him too hard, you'll throw him on his nose. Which seems pretty fair. So, what do you think? Is it a solid throw? Have you seen a better video of this with some context? Uh, if you have, please let me know. Send me the link. Are there other HEMA videos out there that you think I should be looking at? Um, yeah, do let me know. And stick something in the comments. Like, subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. Get the bell on, that kind of thing. And to those of you still here at the very end of the video, fight team.